to the building, everybody. It's good to see you all here. <laughs> it's actually, we've had our first service, uh, the 831, and it was amazing to see people and hug. Yes, you're allowed to hug each other, people. You can high five too. But welcome, welcome back. Um, <laughs> yep, uh, what is it? We're at 10 a.m. Woohoo, go 10 a.m. So, I just wanted to introduce our amazing team up here because you've probably been following us online. So, we thought we'd do a collaboration. So, we have the lovely Sophie Frame and the amazing, awesome Kevin Guata joining me on stage today. And uh, yeah, we'll get started, shall we? Father, we just want to thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We want to thank you that we can come together and, yes, hug each other, Father God. But most of all, Father, we thank you for this building. We thank you that we can come together in the community, Father God, as brothers and sisters, Lord God, to worship you this morning, Lord God, together, Father God. Lord, we thank you. And in this time, as we get into worship, Father, Lord, may it be a sweet sound to you, you. Father, as we stand, as we sit, as we sing aloud, Father God, we declare that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Father God. In Jesus, Jesus, mighty name, hallelujah. Come on, church, let's stay. You are the word at the beginning. On with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation. Now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, our King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you want heaven now. Our sin was great and your love was great. Name it is 
to feel I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave yes, Lord Jesus. to fear I am a child Hallelujah. of God Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus You know 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a love of power and a sound mind. We're no longer slave to fear. No longer. Christ has set us free for the power of his love. Thank you, Jesus. You know, if you need prayer of any kind, we've got a prayer team who will, even, even on this level too, we're going we're gonna to do prayer. Um, our team, they're not going to lay hands on you like we normally would, unless you give them permission. I said that in the last service, and straight away, and then I laid hands on a person. I go, no, you're not going to lay hands, and I straight away I started praying with them. I go, oh, I'm just, just, it's, it's just the way we're, we're created to be people of touch, right? It's been hard for us, us, but well, we will respect your wishes. If you want like us to lay hands on an area that you need healing or something like that, we will do that. But the altar is open, the floor is open. We don't actually have an altar. <laughs> We've got a floor. It's open. If you need prayer, want someone to stand with you, maybe someone's struggling in your family and, and you want to intercede with somebody to stand with you and pray for them, for healing for your mom or your dad or your children or whatever it is. Or maybe you just need prayer for you. You need healing. You need breakthrough. Come on, we've got, we've got a God who loves you, who's the God of the breakthrough. So I want you to come up for prayer as we enter into our next song. You know, if you're watching online, you can, we've got a prayer team dedicated to pray with you online as well. Um, as Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and Martha work, walked, uh, she was working around Jesus and his disciples. Right here, right now, Lord. Father, we come before you, Father, and we ask, Lord God, fill us afresh. Get us ready, Lord God, for tomorrow and what's to come. Father, even when we walk out these doors, Father. Lord God, right here in this moment, Lord God, we're asking, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you for another day, Lord. Fill us afresh. Fill us afresh. I'm caught up in your presence. And I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you don't know me anything, more than anything that you can do. I just want you. And I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Oh, Lord, I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Father, oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. 
nothing else, nothing else, nothing else to do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else to do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else to do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else to do. To worship you, I. To worship you, I, I live to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Lord, we lift you up. We lift, we lift you up in every situation of our life. We lift you up in our families, Lord, in our marriages, in our single lives, in our workplaces, in our places of education. Lord, we lift you up. We lift you up, Lord. May we continue, Lord, to, to be in your presence. And in your presence, Lord, Father God, we're people of love where we can learn to be compassionate with one another and love one another. Lord, we sit in your presence and we stand in your presence, Lord. Father, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Father God, we give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name.
Everybody said amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Fantastic. Hey, say hello to somebody as they sit down. Maybe just give them a wave or a little raised eyebrow. Uh, and uh, yeah, this service is also live. We're, we're live online at the same time. So uh, to all, all our online viewers out there, kia ora. <laughs> so, and especially we've got people from the U.S. who are screening in. So from Florida, it is Saturday, and it is about 20 past 6, I think. That's the time over there. So hello to those in Florida and in Brisbane, 20 past 8. So those in Brisbane. So it's amazing what happens. This is our new normal. We, we, we're live, but also online. We've got people outside of Hamilton that are part of our church family. So it's so good to have you. So if you see me talking to a camera, in fact, it's a bit weird talking to people. Uh, for so long, for nearly over two months of talking to a camera, I, I almost feel kind of strange. I feel like I need to turn around and feel a bit shy. I'm, I'm a, I'm, I am really a shy guy. And, uh, I really am. I'm a shy guy. It's funny because uh, my wife, um, she was singing and she was, and she was looking at me. And she said, um, you know, I can't live without you. She was singing that song, looking at me. And I realized, oh, can't you? Then she realized, no, no, you need to get up here and transition. Oh, sorry. I thought you were singing something that you can't live. Uh, you know, it's really funny because um, some of the behind the scenes of when we're doing our online service from my, from my lounge, from my home. And, um, and this is the first time I've actually sung out loud on a Sunday is today. I couldn't do that at home because apparently uh, when I sing at home, I put my wife off and she's trying to play the keys and sing at the same time. And uh, the, the main problem is, is I sing all the wrong words. Anybody else sing all the wrong words? Come, come, I'm, I'm singing tongues, yeah, and I was putting off. So I just sing in my head. <laughs> so it's so good to sing out loud and all that because she was so mesmerized with my amazing voice. And so she just couldn't concentrate. So it was so good. So thank you. Okay. Um, so there's some house rules. Uh, obviously, with this, this new signing online and or just coming in and filling out a form for contact tracing, um, and we're, and we're just hoping uh, Auntie Jacinda tomorrow brings that news that we can go back to normal next Sunday. Come Wednesday, New Zealand's going to level one. And everybody rushing to countdown to take all the toilet paper back. It's the, re <laughs> it's the reversal. It's the reversal when she said that on, on Wednesday we're going to level four. Everybody's rushing to take the toilet paper. We're going to take it back. You know, I've stored up too many toilet paper at home here. I'm taking it back. Um, so, uh, and, I'm, and I'm looking forward to, uh, hope it looks like, looks like next week we'll be back to normal. We can all just come in any door and not fill out any forms. We just come and fellowship. Because it's, it's kind of countercultural. Because this, in our culture, it's like, hang around, let's fellowship, let's talk. But, it, but because of what's happening, you must leave. Go, go. You know, it's, 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 it's just that's not who we are. It's strange. It's, it is, it's weird. And so even, even so, also now the way we do family time, we, apparently microphones have a lot of germs. I, I, I didn't realize that. And my wife is wearing gloves. And so we're going to have family time. We're not, we're not doing a checkup or anything like that. No checkups. It's just uh, going to give you crunchy. So put it want to come up on stage with me or you're going to stay there. Uh, <laughs> Now, um, I, I know I've just told you we're doing family time differently. Now, for, for the dentists, we are going to be using a microphone, and it's and, uh, just for them, so we're not going to share a microphone, only because it's quite special what they're going to share. Uh, Peter contact, contacted me over a week ago, and it was amazing. There we, we've sanitized their microphone and everything. It's wiped down. We've prayed, prayed over it. So it's all fine. Why don't you guys come on up? Come on up on the stage. Uh, in fact, there's a couple of things we're celebrating, but, um, so whichever, whichever one to go first. Isn't it so good to be back in the house? Yeah. So yeah, good. That's right. So what, what are we... Oh. So we're, we're <laughs> before we get to the big one, maybe we start with the smaller one first. Or yeah. do you wanna... Okay, this is Ellie, this is Jacob, and yesterday, Ellie, what happened? She wants a crunchy. That's what happened. You turned three. Oh my goodness. So, so what did you get for your birthday, Ellie? Alice? Ellie, what did you get? She wants more crunchies. Happy girlfriend. You got lots of things. Lots of things. <laughs> Including Great. a huge doll's house and everything that goes in it. But anyway, yeah, that was awesome. But uh, one yeah. of the things also, what, there's a big celebration also. That, that can, more well, I can say up there. So, and so, um, what, what are we celebrating? What else are we celebrating? Something pretty yeah, big. Uh, you know, today we live in a, in a generation which is very transitional, and it's just good to celebrate things that uh, you are faithful and loyal and committed to. And you know, last month was uh, 30, 30 years at uh, Hamilton Needham. 
30 years in Elam. 30, 30 years, years that we've been Elam. up in Hamilton. Yeah. And we came straight to Elam and we've been here ever since. So, yeah. yeah, and that's amazing. So 30 years in, 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 a, in a church at Elam, that's something to celebrate because, like, you're right, like today, it is kind of like um, a smorgasbord. Okay, what do I feel like this week or, or next this year? So 30 years, and this is something to celebrate. So, so tell us, um, over the 30 years, you would have seen different pastors come through. Uh, who's your favorite? No, just, I'm not going to ask you that. I'm not going to ask you <laughs> no that. Pressure, right? no, no pressure, right? No pressure. There's a lot of great pastors. I'm not going to go there. I was only, only kidding. Uh, so <laughs> so what, what are some of the fond, fond memories that you've, you both of you have had over the last 30 years? Yeah. You know, it's, it's not what we get. We sang those songs so beautiful this morning. It's not to come here and get a blessing, but to be a blessing. Yeah, it's what on. we give the church. It's not what we receive. And we need to make that as our goal that, you know, Jesus gave everything for us. Yes. And, you know, what can we do to give back to him? And I think one of those things is just to be faithful in what God has called you to, to be loyal both to the church and also to the people that come and go. And, you know, Ants did say, we've seen a few pastors. I mean, there are people here who have been here longer than us. But yeah. uh, in the 30 years, it has been about seven pastors. But, you know, seven it's just pastors. putting God first. That's a biblical number, right? Because seven means completion. So he finally got to completion. I just... <laughs> <laughs> There's a scripture for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. No, no, it's all good. <laughs> carry on. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'll tell you what. Um, let, Porter, once you come up, well, let's pray. Let's pray for... Um, oh, Champagne, would you like to share something? Yeah. No, no, I mean... Th- <laughs> We, like Peter said, we've been here a long time, and a lot of you have, or some of you have been a lot longer than us, and people come and go, but it's good to see that people are still faithful. I mean, yeah. it, the world is made of all sorts of people, even Christians, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, and, but for us to grow up in the family, now we've got grandchildren, it's good to see people supporting us, and we support each other, and we still love each other, which is great. So thank you for that as well. And um, yeah, through the ups and downs of church, each other, we're there for each other. And I think that's an important thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you both have served many, many ministries. Like um, Champagne, you, you headed a power zone for so, kids' yeah. ministry for so long. Yeah. Peter, you've done uh, count, count, missions, missions yeah. Yeah, uh, all sorts of things. It's, you guys have got so, a wealth of experience, which is, which is so good that we as, um, I was going to say, we as younger, we as, uh, as, <laughs> as, as, as people can share one another the wisdom that we have. So why don't we pray a blessing? Uh, so let's come up. Uh, just um, an encouragement to all of you. God has given each one of you a ministry. Um, whether you know it or not, there is something there. And, you know, sometimes you go to a place, and it's in that place where God wants to cultivate, develop that ministry. So there will come a time when God puts you out there. And it's just like Moses, 40 years in the desert. And then he went to Egypt. And God said to him, well, what have you got in your hand? And it's something that had been developing in secret for many years. And, and for us, you know, God's called us here to Hamilton for a reason. We don't know how much longer we're going to be here. But we do know that God's got a purpose. In, and the big picture is God is doing something new in the church, the collective church. And we can be yeah, a part on. of that. And we can really grab hold of what God is calling us and go with it. So I just yeah. want to, I also want to bless the church too. Yeah, thank you so much. Come on, let's, let's pray. Uh, Peter, you also want to come on stage. In fact, um, I'll, I'll pray. Put the microphone down. So Father God, we thank you Lord for, for Peter and Champagne and the family. We think of uh, Christy and Alicia and all the grandchildren, Lord, we just pray for the legacy that they, that they have established, Lord, in you. Father, you're being their, uh, their foundation, Lord. You're, you're being their, their solid rock, and, and you'll continue to be their solid rock. And Lord, I just pray for a blessing upon um, Peter and Champing's um, grandchildren and, and great-grandchildren and generations to come, Father, that they'll look at uh, Peter and Champing and say, well, we want to have a faith uh, that, that models our, our, our grandparents. We want that for ourselves. We want our own faith just like them. So, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that, that you have used them for, for such time as this to be a blessing, not just to us, Lord, but to the next generation to come. Lord, we, we just bless them uh, on their next endeavors, whatever that may be. Uh, we know they're not going anywhere yet, Lord, but uh, in, their, in their workplaces or wherever they do, Lord, continue, Lord, to be the voice, Father, that, that's within them, Lord. Continue and to cause them to speak your words, Lord, Father, uh, words of truth and and peace. Lord, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh, Paul, have you got that microphone? Oh, here it is. 
It's kind of gone around. Here you go. Father, I just want to lift up Hamilton Elam before you, Lord. And Father, as we have said many times in the past, the best is yet to come. come on. And Father, I speak blessing over Hamilton Elam, Lord, that your goodness and your grace, your riches and mercy and blessing and provision, Lord, would rest upon this house, Lord. That, Father, it would be great, though, Lord, we are small in number, Lord, Father, we would be great in your eyes. Yes, Lord. And, Father, we pray for Hamilton City, Lord. Father, this is our heritage. This is our a land, Lord, that you've given to us. And Lord, we just pray for Ants and Puru, Lord. Father, we pray for the eldership in this church, that Lord, you would glorify your name in this place, Lord. Father, make us great, Lord, not for us, but for your name, Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Praise God. All right, family, here we go. Come on up. Oh, here we go. Come up. What are we celebrating? During lockdown? On my birthday. You had your birthday during lockdown? Really? How old? Five. I thought you were 10. So it's five. Wow. Five. So how do you feel? Do you feel so much older? Yeah, come on. Five. Years. What's happening tomorrow? I'm going to school. You're going to school? Really? What's your first day? Which school? Tell me to be proud. Oh, you're going to be brave. I know that. You're going to be brave. You looking forward to it? Come on, bring it on. Your big brother going with you too? Yeah. yeah excited? My brother's in um, a bigger class than me. Yeah, bigger class. Well, it won't be long. You'll be there too. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, come on. We've got, we've got a, anything else? Oh, yes, you had your prayer answered in lockdown. Yes. Really, really materialistic. Yeah. Um, but my car died in lockdown because it was Your car died. Every day. Your car died during lockdown. Oh, yeah. Say, say petrol. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and on. Was it Wednesday, Thursday? Wednesday. I got a, I got a new vehicle. I got my, my ultimate vehicle. Really? Yeah. Got your Ferrari? Wow. Look. <laughs> oh, no, not good. No, no, no. no. Okay. Six kids now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great. Um, yeah, it took a week, but we got there. It oh. was so disturbing to me because we went back and they still had it, but they'd sold the other version of it. Really? Oh, praise God, we've got breakthrough. Fantastic. Well, and grab your crunchy and, and have a great day tomorrow at school. Fantastic. Give them a hand. Well, it's been a long time since I've been back with people. Yeah, it's bit, I had a bit of, anybody have cabin fever, June? Anyway, have, have I missed anything? Anybody else? <laughs> what are we celebrating? Come on up. What are we celebrating? What are we celebrating? Um, I gave my friend Lucky a present. You gave your friend Lucky a present? Wow, she's lucky. <laughs> what, 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 you, what, what, what kind of present did you give? Perfume. Perfume. Whoa. That, here, we're going to give you a present. <laughs> now you're lucky. Awesome, fantastic. Give her a hand. She's, oh. oh, I would reenact that, but I don't want any damages to happen to me. But anyway, let us pray. Father God, we thank you. You're God of families. You're God of breakthrough. Lord, I thank you for, for uh, your generosity to us. Let us be generous to people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much, my amazing wife, Poro, and everybody that came up, and everybody online. I haven't forgotten you, so everybody online. Um, so here, we're going to be going into a new series uh, for June. I better grab my notes. So, so uh, here we go. Thank you so much. Just make sure I don't go off to tangents. That's why I have notes, because I sometimes I go, I go off somewhere else. Um, we're doing this new series in June, and it's called Rewire. It's changing the way we think. We did this series a few years ago, and we thought it would be great for this season, this time, especially during this, the lockdown and with an anxiety that's happening. And, and, and worry that, that takes hold of us. And sometimes even our thinking changes and how, how, how can we rewire the way that God has called us to, to live. And especially, you know, especially on the news lately, we, we've seen um, the tragedy of, 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 of George Floyd and what's happened in America, the loss of a life that was un, unneeded by authorities that, you know, all these things. And now there's all this worry. We see these things on, on TV, Black Lives Matter, and, and that something's in our face. How do we deal with this? How do we process this? 
How do, you know, how do we go through all this kind of stuff? And so rewire. This is what our series is about, changing the way we think. And I know you're going to enjoy this. In fact, um, we've got some guests who are going to be sharing this month. It's not just going to be me. Um, we have PJ and Yalta. Yalta and PJ. Uh, so, in fact, next week, Yalta's going to be preaching, bringing the word. Uh, Yalta is an ordained minister of the Elam movement. And so, and you've preached many times. This will be your first time in Hamilton. So I'm looking forward to it. And uh, very experienced in this field of mental health and things like this. So you don't want to miss. Invite your friends and family. Bring as much people as you can. No restrictions. It'll be great. Okay. And also PJ. She's a qualified counselor. Um, very qualified. That's why I keep going to her for, for counseling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I send people her way all the time. Hey, look, you want some quality counseling? Get a hold of PJ. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's get into this. Rewire. Brand new series. Number one, you know, our mind is powerful. Did you know that? Your mind is powerful. Uh, we've got this amazing ability where, where we can talk to people, and at the same time, we can step out of our bodies, and we can assess the way we're talking to somebody. We can say, mm, maybe I'm a bit harsh there. Maybe, maybe I need to be a bit more lighter. And we can talk to ourselves like this. Quantum physics calls this um, super, what does it call it? Superposition. We're super positioned, we, we step out of it, we, be, we, can, we can talk, we can have conversations with ourselves while we're talking to somebody else. It's amazing. Hey, have you ever found your mind wander when you're talking to somebody? You're talking away, you're, you look like you're engaged, but you're, but you're actually far away somewhere else. Anybody been there before? In, in fact, some of you are doing it right now. I'm talking to you, your mind's somewhere else. You're thinking so, and, and if you're anything like me, this is what you're thinking. Hmm, what am I going to have for lunch? Is it Macca's or was it KFC? Oh, wait, I've only got 10 bucks. It's only, oh, it's fish and chips. <laughs> it's fish and chips, that's what I'm having. You know, we have, the, we, you know, we, we, our mind, it, 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 can, it can go somewhere, and we can listen to a conversation, have a conversation with ourselves. At the same time, our mind is powerful. Things trigger our mind. Things from our, we see something, and it triggers our mind from our past, and it comes into our consciousness. Like for me, I don't like eating mince pies. Anybody love mince pies? Any mince, mince and cheese people here? Any mince people? Any steak and cheese steak people? I'm a steak person. Give me a steak. Anything with steak. Steak and mushrooms. Steak. Steak and cheese. Steak and bacon. Steak and steak. I oh, mean, oh, <laughs> just give me steak. I don't like mince. The reason why I don't like mince is because it triggers a memory of when I was a boy and my mum forcing me to eat mince stew. Anybody else have a mum that used to force you to eat when you don't want to eat? The good old days. No, no, that's not. It's not. No, it's, it's, it, don't try this at home. <laughs> this is, my mom, this is what she'll do. And, and mom, if you're watching this, I love you, mom. Because <laughs> my mom watches the service. I love you, mom. And, um, and uh, I, I love you. I, I'm just, I don't know if I should carry on my story now. I'm not, I'm not aware. Yeah, my mom's watching. I don't, yeah. and, and so she'll have, have a spoon with the mince and, and get it. open your mouth. Open your mouth. And, and on the other hand was a wooden spoon. <laughs> and because of that, I don't eat mince pies. Because of that. So here's the thing. Triggers. They, they are external stimulation that, that triggers a memory and it brings it to the forefront. And we have to choose. How do we act or react to this, this, this past memory that we've, that's been triggered is now in the forefront of our consciousness? Do we act positively or do we act negatively? And guess who gets to choose? You do. You are 100% in control of every decision you make. Every reaction is you. I can choose to act positively or negatively. And so this is what I do now. I, I don't allow my past to dictate my future. I choose to create the very best for my life now. Now, and you can too. You have the ability to create the best for your life now. This is what we do. We, we've created a culture. We've created a culture of blame. I'm, I blame you for the way I feel. I'm feeling like this because it's your fault. You've made me feel like this. And we've deferred responsibility. The reason why I treated like you like this is because you made me treat you like this. The reason why I hurt you is because you made me hurt you. And, this is, and what we're doing is we make ourselves the victim. I've just hurt you, but I'm the victim because you made me do that. But you have the choice. You are 100% in control of your choices. Many of us don't, we don't even know that. 
We, we feel that we're, how we act is, is, is what's been dictated to us. But you have choice. We need to understand this. You have a powerful mind. You can choose. You can choose the very best for your life. Now, you can allow your past to dictate your future, or you can choose the very best and create happiness and joy now. You have control. You've got so much control. So much control. See, even in prayer, we defer responsibility. I've got an issue. But I don't want to take responsibility for my issue. So I'm going to go to God. God, it's your issue. I'm going to give, I don't want to work through my issues because that's hard. And I'm going to have to confront some things in my life that I don't want to confront. So I'm going to defer it to you. Lord, Lord, you take it away from me. I don't want any responsibility. You take it away from me. You know, as a pastor, many people have come to me for prayer. And, you know, and, and even you, you, you probably, you've probably prayed for many, many people. And sometimes people come back with the same issue, same issue over and over again. And the reason being is because they're deferred responsibility. We haven't, we haven't chosen to work through these issues. I, I want to just be gone. And this is what happens. Yeah, this is what happens. We defer it and we feel breakthrough, which is great. But then a couple of days, then one day, next day I'm feeling good. I've gotten through this issue. The next day I'm really good. Then what happens on the fourth day? Boom, you're back in that issue again. And quite often we're in a worse position than before. The reason being is because we never took responsibility. We deferred it. We just... We just, we just just, just wave your hands around. Pray for me. Pray for me, Pastor. Wave your hand. Do that magic stuff. Make it go away. Don't touch me. It's, it's coronavirus. Anyway. That's what Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. This is what Jesus says. And he's speaking of impure spirits that leave us. Darkness. Evil that leave us. This is what he says in verse 43. When an impure spirit comes out of a person... It goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. So when God brings breakthrough and healing, we need to celebrate that. But we also need to take responsibility. If, you, if, you, if, if you're going through issue, you're giving it to God, we need then put things in place. that You know what? I need to put safeguards in place that I don't fall back into that temptation again. I need to put safeguards in place that I don't fall back into that issue again. Because if we don't put these safeguards in place, we find ourselves in a worse place than ever before. And that's why Jesus says, speaking of this impure spirit, in verse 44, then it says, I will return to the house, speaking of this impure spirit, speaking of as, as that person as the house. I will return to the house I left. And when it arrives, it finds a house, what, how, what does it find? Unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. We've left the door unlocked. For that issue to come back into it, it's swept and clear. There's nothing in place to stop this, this, this impure spirit to take hold in our lives. And we find ourselves back in the same issue again because we haven't taken responsibility. Because I, 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 I just kind of prayed and I, I deferred it. I wanted it to go. But you have 100% control of the way you think. God's given you a powerful mind. And we need to, we need to take responsibility. We need to work through things. Work through, don't, let's, don't look, we all like looking for shortcuts. Quick, rich schemes. How many of you ever tried a quick, rich scheme? That's why people do lotto. We want to get rich now, because if I, if I win lotto, all my problems are gone, right? Because that solves all our problems, right? Money solves all our problems. No, it doesn't. Because even if you win lotto, if you haven't put anything in place, you find yourself back into that place of poverty again. It's got nothing to do with money. It's all, it's all about taking responsibility. You can choose the very best for your life today. Did I even finish that verse? I can't remember. <laughs> oh, here we go, verse 45. Then it goes and it takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go and they live, live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than, than the first. This is how it will be with this wicked generation. We have this generation of blame, this victim mentality. We make ourselves victims. We have so much more control than we, we, we've been led to believe. You have so much more control of the way you think. You have so much control of your reaction. You can choose to react or you can choose to, be, to, re, uh, or you can cho choose to take control of the situation. That's why 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, I, I said this during, during a time of worship. Uh, if, you've, if you've heard me preach before, you'll hear me say this verse over and over again because if you can get this verse into your spirit, it will change the way you think, I promise you. And it's this, it's, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and an out-of-control mind. A mind that's easily swayed. A mind that's undisciplined. No, it doesn't say that. God has given you a sound mind. 
You have a sound mind. Your mind is powerful. Do you realize how powerful your mind is? It's powerful. You are not your brain. You are not your brain. Your mind drives your brain. Your mind is 99% and the 1% is the brain. Your mind drives your brain. Every action is a manifestation of thought. Did you get that? Every action is a manifestation of thought. Every action I do is because of a thought that I've manifested in my mind. You have, what, what does this mean? It means you have control. You can choose. You can control, you, you can control the way that we think. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Science has proven it. Did you know that your brain is hardwired for love? You are hardwired for love. That's how God made you. In fact, that's a scientific term. Your brain is hardwired for love. It's science, that's a scientific term. You're wired for joy. You're wired for hope. You're wired for happiness. You're wired for love. Sometimes we feel that we're wired for fear. That we're wired for fear. We need to tell ourselves the truth. God didn't make you that way. You are not wired for fear. That's not who you are. We learn fear. It's time to rewire the way we think. The greatest gift that God gave you is your mind. It's powerful. It's sound. It's wired for love. So when a negative thought comes and it takes hold of our brain, did you know that a negative thought actually physically changes your brain? And the reason why it physically changes your brain is because you're hardwired for love. So when a negative thought comes, it brings imbalance of chemicals in your brain because your brain wasn't designed for, for negativity. You weren't designed, you were hardwired for love. And it actually changes the way you, the way you think and it imbal brings imbalance in your, in your thinking. You're not, not wired that way. God didn't make you that way. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says this, we demolish arguments and every pretensions that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. We take captive every thought and we make it obedient to Christ. You're thinking constantly. Thoughts are happening, happening constantly. You're thinking. Even right, you're thinking different things even right now. Every 10 seconds, we need to take captive of our thought and make it obedient to God. I know what you're thinking. That sounds exhausting. What, every 10 seconds we've got to take captive every thought? Well, we're thinking all the time. We might as well make it, a, make it a healthy line of thinking. We might as well make it good thinking. We need to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Because we've become undisciplined in our thinking. Our thinking have got, has gotten out of control. But you choose, you can choose the very best for your life now. You can take captive every thought. Don't let your mind wander. I'm speaking to the guys. If you see a, um, some pretty little thing walking along, take captive every thought. Don't let your mind wander. Don't say, oh, well, it's the way I've been wired. I'm a guy, I've got urges. You know, oh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just admiring God's beauty. Don't fool yourself. God had wired you for love, not to disrespect somebody in your thinking. You wouldn't want anybody to disrespect your daughter in their thinking. So don't disrespect someone else's daughter in your thinking. You went wired that way. Take captive every thought and make it obedient to Jesus. We've got to do this every 10 seconds. Come on. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. We've become undisciplined in our thinking. But you have the power to choose the very best for your life today. I'm going to say something very controversial. And, so, and the reason why I say that is so I can get your attention. They'll go, well, oh, what's, what's con very confidential? I'll t I'm going to tell you that answer in another four weeks. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm going to tell you now. This, this is it. <laughs> Prayer doesn't transform you. Prayer doesn't transform you. Now, before you stone me, I'm, it's, not real, it's really not, not controversial because of what I'm going to say next. But intentional prayer. Deep thinking prayer. Intentional prayer leads to a life of breakthrough. Intentional Amen. prayer. We've got to be intentional with the, with the way we pray. Because when we're intentional with the way we pray, it changes our thinking. If you're struggling in your marriage, it's intentional prayer that brings breakthrough. I don't pray, Lord, I just pray that may, that may Portal be more loving, may she love the way I sing more. 
Well, I don't say, Lord, why is Porter like this? Why does she, why she treat me like this? Why does she make me um, be, be, I don't know, I, I, I'm, I'm, make, I'm just making it up again. I'm like, I'm like, wow, man, Anthony's got a lot of issues. Okay, <laughs> He's got a lot of problems. I'm not making it but this is, this is how you are intentional. If you're struggling in your marriage with your spouse, your husband, or your wife, with your mom, your dad, whoever it is, your boss, this is where you pray, Lord, help me love my wife like she's never been loved before. That's the kind of prayer we need to pray, intentional prayer. Let me love my wife like she's never been loved before. Lord, let me be, uh, let me be a father that understands my children more. Let me be a father that's a father of love. We need to be intentional. And this is what happens when we begin to pray intentional prayer. In fact, research proves it, that intentional prayer, this is what it does to negative thought lives that have taken hold of our thinking. Research shows that, that intentional prayer mounts away negative thoughts, mounts it away. We bring it out into the open. We weaken it. It begins to become malleable. And when it's malleable, it begins to change. I've been reading a dictionary when I've been on lockdown. I was like, wow, I don't even know what that word is. I hope I'm using it right, too. <laughs> I was just thinking, wait, where did that word come from? <laughs> and we can begin to change it. This is the way that if we begin to live our life like this, we begin to see breakthrough in our life, see breakthrough in anxiety, depression, whatever it is, the way we treat people, the way we treat our boss, the way we treat people of a different ethnicity. Well, let me say that properly. Ethnicity, yeah, different, different culture, <laughs> a different race. <laughs> When, we, when we're intentional with, with our prayer, then breakthrough happens. See, life is full of making bad decisions, right? Has anybody ever made a bad decision before? In fact, many of us have made bad decisions this morning. You know, I shouldn't have wore those jeans with that shirt. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is, for, I don't know. We're going to continue to make bad decisions. In fact, we are all victims of someone else's bad decision. Did you know that? We're all victims of someone else's bad decision. Jesus certainly was. They crucified him. In fact, it was my bad decision that got him there. It was my sin that, that, that put him to the cross. But if I'm facing the consequences of someone else's bad decision, I have to look at this consequence, and I need to make a decision of how I'm going to react. I mean, how am I going to operate in love? How am I going to move through this? It's about being honest. It's about being honest with God. You know, sometimes we come to God, and we, we're not honest with Him. Who are we kidding? God knows it all anyway. Don't say it's not an issue when it's an issue. He knows it anyway. It's about being honest and open before Him. That's where clarity comes, when we're honest with God. In fact, James chapter 5, verse 16 says this, Therefore, confess your sins not to God. It doesn't say confess your sins to God. It doesn't say that. It says, Therefore, confess your sins to what? To each other and pray for each other so that you may be what? Healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. See, God has designed us to be strengthened and, and to be healed when we begin to open up and share with people that we trust, people that we love, that, that are not going to be judging us. God has designed us to open up because when we bring something out into the light, that's when, when progress begins to happen. When something is hidden, it's strong. If you're struggling with something and you're, you're the only one that knows it, you're going to be struggling with this for a long time. It's when we bring things out into the light. You know, we've been doing, during the lockdown, we did something called Table Talk. It was a midweek online program. And I invited um, a good friend of mine, Monty Volivaka, to our pro. I feel like saying, I invited him to our show. And, uh, and he spoke on that. And he's a, he's a uh, social worker in South Auckland. He, and he works with, he runs a program with, uh, with men through domestic violence who hurt their, who, who physically hurt their, their, their partners and their children. So he physically, so he physically, he works with them. And what they do, they sit around, they talk. Because something happens when we talk, when we bring something out in the open. It begins to, it begins to mount away negative thought. And there's been a lot of breakthrough, a lot of breakthrough in this program. Because men are talking, encouraging one another, encouraging one another. And this is when we begin to overcome, because you have the power to overcome and make the right decision in your life today. Every single one of us. Let us not be victims of our past. Let us make, not make ourselves our victim. Let us take control of our thought life today. Let's begin to change. It doesn't happen overnight, but when we're consistent, things begin to happen. Things begin to move. Let's take control. In fact, um, he, this is what he put on, on the program. Uh, on, uh, I tell you what, I encourage you, if you've never watched it, 
Go back to it, and it's on our online YouTube channel, Hamilton Elam Online. Watch it. It's, it's an amazing watch. Monty Valivaka. Um, he's this big New Wan Māori guy. Uh, he's and a long life friend of ours, Mana Portals. And it's well worth the, the watch. And listen, he's going to sing. He sings a few songs as well. I sing in a harmonized. No, I don't. No, no. Intentional prayer leads to a life of breakthrough. You know, I'm, I'm going to end with this. You know, over, you know, I, I opened it with it about you know, on, on our social media feeds and even on TV. You see the protests in America. Black lives matter. And it's like in our face. And it's like, man, we don't want to hear this. But sometimes it's exactly what we need to hear. Because it, it brings us to confront some issues in our life. All of us. Regardless of what race or nationality we are. We need to confront some things because most, most Kiwis believe that we're not racist. But there is, a, there is a, a subtle current of racism, subtly. And that's the issue. That's the problem. And the reason why it's an issue is because we don't believe it's an issue. Many of us have heard these phrases. You've either been in a car with somebody and you've heard them say it, or you may have said this. Someone cuts you off on the road, you have a look in the car, and you hear these words, Asian drivers. You ever heard that before? Have you ever said that before? Don't put your hand up. We've got deacons at the back. He's mocking. Uh. Have you heard that before? You know, I'm not racist. Asian drivers, subtly. That's an issue. You know, um, even, even for the Warriors, you know, watch the Warriors, you know, and, and on Talkback Radio. So I don't listen to Talkback Radio, especially when they talk about the Warriors. It gets me, I get depressed, uh, especially when they do one, well one weekend. Anyway, let's carry on. I'm dealing through my issues. Um, but I, I, this one here on Talkback. Oh, you know, this is the problem with the Warriors. Too many Islanders. We need, we need some, uh, we need some uh, other players in there, some, we need some thinkers. What they're saying is that Islanders can't think. We need some white people who can think. That's what's the problem with the Warriors. This is the subtleness that comes through this. You hear this all the time. This, I even hear this of others saying this of white people. White people are just arrogant. Let me tell you, I've met a lot of arrogant people who are not just white. Well, subtly it runs through everybody. Being multicultural myself, it's, I easily slip between two different streams really easily, and I see it on both sides. Subtly, it's an issue. All those people, that people group over there, they're always on social welfare. They should just get a job. Have you ever heard people say that? You know, um, my, 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 my fruit and veggie shop that I go to, we've got, they're run by Indians. And I'm always having conversations with them. But they share about when people say that, oh, you know, you Indians, you guys are just here to rip us off. They have these conversations all the time. It's just, and like, oh, we're not racist. But here's the thing, we can change the way we think. And, and it's really good to be honest. Like, well, all of us, we all, you know, we've all been in environments through things like that. We need to change the way we think because God didn't design us like this. We're, we're wired for love. That's the real you. That's the real you. You're wired for love. So that means every wrong thing you do, every criticism, you, any prejudice thought you do, that's not the real you because you weren't created like that. You're created to love. So don't put any labels on yourself. Well, oh, I, I, I'm, just, this is, I'm just a negative person. That's not true. Don't get rid of that label. Or oh, I'm just a, a, a negative person. I, I, well, you know what? I'm, 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 this is just who. This is my lot. That is not your lot in life. You're wired for love. We need to. You need to tell yourself the truth. You're wired for love. That's the real you. Every compassion you do. That's the real you. You're wired that way. Intentional prayer leads to life of breakthrough. Breakthrough. See, in this room, there are countless people who have stories of experiencing racism or sexism. Let's throw that in there. Yeah, have you ever, someone cuts you off or something like that, and you look in the car and you see it's a, it's a lady. And what do you hear? Woman drivers? I see, this is what I say when, when something happens. I say, overcautious drivers? I ch change the way I think, overcautious driver? But you know what we should say? Law-abiding drivers? People who obey the law, drivers? Because when you say that, then all of a sudden, uh-oh, I'm in the wrong. Take responsibility. Maybe it's me. Maybe I, I need to look in the mirror before I look at the speck in someone else's eye when I've got a log in my own. 
You know, yes, racial profiling happens in this country. Yes, I have witnessed it many times within my own family and with my friends. But we can choose to overcome racism and take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ because all lives matter. All lives matter. See, never look down on anybody unless you're helping them up. When you show compassion to others, it not only changes you, but it begins to change the world. Intentional prayer leads to, the, uh, to a life of breakthrough. Jesus knew that racism can be overcome with compassion. And this is why he says this great commandment, the Jesus Creed. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Jesus throws this bit in, your mind in there. With your brain. With all your mind. Not your brain, your mind. And with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. No commandment greater than these. If you can get this into your spirit, you begin to be intentional with your prayer to love God, love people, regardless of what they look like or what color. If you can get it into your spirit, you watch yourself become more aware of people, be more aware of people all around you. It's dangerous because you begin to care. You begin to care when you get this into your spirit, when you're, when you're intentional with your prayer. If you want to see breakthrough in racism, hatred towards someone, you want to see hatred go, come on, do the Jesus Creed. Love God, love people. And you'll find yourself sensitive like never before. See, it's easy to hate, but it takes strength to show compassion. Intentional prayer leads to life of breakthrough. This is what grace is, is undeserved love. Favor that God loved you so much that he gave his, his son. God loved you so much that he stepped into his creation. And he became the fullness of Jesus that on the cross, he died for your sins. You know, if we can hit the reset button on some of our greatest regrets, we would. How many of us would love to go back and change? Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. We would. And some of us live with these regrets and it, and it eats us up on the inside. But this is, what God, this is what God did for you, that on the cross, he died for your greatest regrets. It's a gift that he's given you. And if you want to receive this gift, we need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you had it for whatever reason, you've fallen out of relationship. It's, it's easy to do. I've done it. But the gift of God is still here. Grace, it abounds. His love is unstoppable and it abounds for you. His gift abounds for you. So if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, come back to him. Just receive this gift. And if you're watching online, there's a button that says, raise your hand for Jesus. Click that button. And I encourage you to get hold of our prayer team online and someone will be praying for you. You're not alone. Let grace abound. So if that's true, if you, if you want to receive Jesus or maybe you want to come back to him, let me say a prayer for you, with you, for you. So we're all, all eyes closed, so let us pray. Father God, thank you for your love that abounds, your grace that abounds, that chases us down. Thank you that we can come to you. Lord, we place at your feet all our greatest regrets. We place at your feet all our issues and troubles and things that we're struggling with. We place and we lay it at your feet, Lord Jesus. The things that I'm struggling with today, I'm laying it at your feet. My greatest regret, I'm laying it at your feet. My greatest struggle, I'm laying it at your feet. I come to you where your grace abounds, I'm laying it at your feet. Father, forgive me for my sins. Make me whole. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. He deserves all our praise. Thank you. You've got a very important notice. If you're wondering at this amazing artwork, this was created by Sophie's mom, Louise. Whoa, artist. Fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, we're going to put that out there. So thank you so much. So there you go. If you need any artwork done, go see Louise. <laughs> Just hey, I do want to say this. I've said this prayer, and I see this prayer by laying, laying it at, at Jesus' feet. Remember what I said, intentional prayer. 
at least a life of breakthrough. You've got to be intentional every single day. If you're struggling with something, with an issue, go to Jesus daily. That's why the Bible talks about constant prayer, live a life of prayer, intentional prayer. Daily, but go before his feet and lay it at his feet. Don't just do it one day and I'm all sweet, I'm good tomorrow. I said the prayer yesterday, I'm all good. The pastor said the prayer, he waved his hand around. Daily, go before the cross daily. Do it every day until breakthrough. Don't just do one day. Go at least 21 days and you'll see your life change. Daily, I'm laying down my struggle. I'm laying down my issue. I'm going across daily. It's intentional. Be intentional with your prayer and you'll begin to see your life, lead a life of breakthrough. Well, my church, we come to the end of our service. Thank you so much. And I'm, and I'm looking for final instructions. Oh, yes, we have to... Because of the government regulations, we have to go through in one door and out another. The exit's over there. Um, also, the FPOS machine is in that room if you want to give. Thank you so much for those who, who, who generously um, support and get behind what we do. Uh, if you want to give via FPOS, you can go. Uh, and there's an FPOS machine there. Thank you for those who give online. Thank you so much. There is a Dropbox too if you want to put cash in. Uh, I'll put those kind of information out there. Hopefully next week, Auntie Jacinda gives us, the, gives us the all clear to come back. And uh, we can come and be blessed. But hey, remember, you have the power to choose the very best for your life today. God bless everybody. Have a fantastic rest of the week.